It's time for your third lesson in GarageBand, and today I'm going to be discussing the presets that are available to you as a singer or a guitar player or a bass player, keyboard player, all sorts of great presets available, and then how to use the plugins inside of them, and then a few pro tips to make sure that you get the best sounds, especially out of the guitars and basses. All right, let's get to it. So for the sake of example, I'm just gonna open up a blank project here, and here is just a blank channel, okay? So over here on the left-hand side, you have all these different choices here, and we're gonna start with a voice track. Here are all these different presets that you can use. My personal favorite is the classic vocal, so I'm just gonna start with that. So now we have it on the channel here, and if we come down here to the bottom, you'll see this word plugins here. If you click on the little triangle, boom, you get this little list of all the things that you're gonna be using, okay? So just so you do know, the way you wanna operate, especially at the beginning, um, you're gonna turn these off, and I did that simply by clicking and swiping. I can click, swipe, and release, and then they all turn off at the once, um, <laughs> at the once. So I would you know, start with this EQ here, and I would manipulate it and make sure that I get the sound I want out of it, understanding that you don't want to do a lot, okay? Especially at the beginning. Try to keep things simple. You don't want to do a lot of the, like these big moves, right? You want to keep things nice and simple. Then, one by one, you want to go through and turn these other components on. So in this case, a compressor, you'll come in here and you will manipulate and find the sounds that you want out of these lists of available settings okay now i do of course have other much more in-depth tutorials on how to use a compressor so check out my channel page and just you know type in compressors and you'll find them <laughs> okay all right so that's the compressor so that's that's what i'm here to tell you you just go through one by one and you add them in and you get the sound that you want you're going to be going back and forth and you know manipulating all of them a little bit here and there to get the sound tailored just your way but uh that's that so now more interesting thing about these plugins you can of course turn these off or, or get rid of them completely like this de -esser, i don't use it so let's say no plug-in right i'm not using it now you could also turn it on and have something in that slot now if you're at this point and it looks like you don't have any space, you do have space, watch this. So I can come in here and see that little line that just appeared between the top and bottom one. If I click there, I can now open another one and I can open another one and you can open, I believe it's up to 16. Um, you can open a lot of different presets. Then the other thing that you can do is if you want to experiment like where your uh, effects are coming from, you can move them around by just clicking and dragging and dropping wherever you want, right? Um, I maybe should have used things with different names. So, it <laughs> Anyway, you get the idea. You can move them around, all right? So now, let's take a look and make sure that you get the best electric guitar and bass sounds that you can, right? So we're going to go in. We're going to open another channel here. We're going to choose electric guitar. Okay, so of course, you have electric guitar and bass sounds all in here. And my advice to anybody who uses these is to not mess with them too much, okay? These sounds are really, really, really good and they don't require a lot of tailoring. If you just trust the basic setup of these, you can go a really, really far away. The other thing that I do say though, if you do wanna go in and manipulate the things, like the EQ, for example, again, keep it minimal. Look how little there is on here already to begin with. That's kind of the concept of what I'm trying to tell you. Keep it simple, keep it minimal. The other thing I wanna mention about these sounds, and this goes for guitar and bass, is that if you come all the way over here to the right-hand side, this little button here, you can open up the amplifier. You can do everything from moving the microphone in front of the virtual cabinet to changing the microphone. You can change the cabinet, you can change the amp, you can change the model. There are a ton of different options in here. You can change the reverb if you want. You can change all sorts of different things here. But this is um, the one of the more powerful sides of it. Like I like to change the microphones a lot, but usually, like I said, I don't mess with these sounds all that much. If I'm doing a lot of guitar tracks or something, I'll make sure that they don't all have the same virtual microphone being used because that's an important component to making sure that they don't all sound exactly the same. You know what I mean? So that's a very, very brief and basic overview of this, but just know that there's a lot of cool options in here. 
Same thing goes with the compressors and all the effects here, the plugins. You can add plugins here, uh, just like everywhere else. But that's the basic nuts and bolts of dealing with the plugins and getting these presets. The presets are really good, even for the vocal stuff, even for the acoustic guitar stuff. They're very good starting places for beginners out there. And uh, that's what's awesome about GarageBand is that you have these really nice options and uh, it makes life easier. And that's awesome because all we want to do is make sounds and make music and make cool things and, you know, whatever, podcasts or whatever it is you're doing. Um, GarageBand makes it super easy. So I hope that this helps you get a little basic overview of how the whole thing works. And uh, I'll be back with part four next week. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace and love.